You are interested in the unusual, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. The headline, false memories are more common than you think. And it's based on the research done by Dr. Elizabeth Loftus. She is a cognitive scientist and law professor who has studied memory for more than 40 years. In a study we published just a few months ago, we have an answer to this question. Because what was unusual about this study is we arranged for people to have a very stressful experience. The subjects in the study were members of the US military who were undergoing a, a harrowing training exercise to teach them what it's going to be like for them if they are ever captured as prisoners of war. And as part of this training exercise, these soldiers are interrogated in an aggressive, hostile, physically abusive fashion for 30 minutes. And later on, they have to try to identify the person who conducted that interrogation. And when we feed them suggestive information that insinuates it's a different person, many of them misidentify their interrogator, often identifying someone who doesn't even remotely resemble the real interrogator. And so what these studies are showing is that when you feed people misinformation about some experience that, that they may have had, you can distort or contaminate or change their memory. Well, out there in the real world, misinformation is everywhere. We get misinformation not only if we're questioned in a leading way, but if we talk to other witnesses who might consciously or inadvertently feed us some erroneous information, or if we see uh, media coverage about some event we might have experienced, all of these provide the opportunity for this kind of contamination of our memory. In the 1990s, we began to see an even more extreme kind of memory problem. Some patients were going into therapy with one problem, maybe they had depression, eating disorder, and they were coming out of therapy with a different problem. Extreme memories for horrific brutalization. Some of these situations involved some particular form of psychotherapy. And so I asked, were some of the things going on in this psychotherapy, like the imagination exercises, or dream interpretation, or in some cases hypnosis, or in some cases exposure to false information, were these leading these patients to develop these very bizarre, unlikely memories? Gotcha. Let me tell you something about the, uh, the book on aliens, yep. which you know, I, of course, in a tongue-in-cheek manner, I titled it Fifty Shades of Grey Aliens. Um, I'll tell you about one of the stories in there because, okay, you, you, I'm sure you recognize the name Whitley Strieber. I do. I've heard bad. I've heard that that guy was associated or affiliated with the Process Church or something like that, or one of these occult groups. Well, the the thing about Strieber is he. I mean, I disagree with him 100%, but he is a fascinating character in that, for example, is he not the poster boy of the alien contact phenomena? Yeah, communion, right? right? Wasn't right. that the big one? Yes, but, but he has never, ever claimed that he's in contact with aliens. Interesting. That's so how interesting... About yeah. Well, that's how interesting it is, is that he is the poster child for that, and he never claims. He refers to them as visitors. Interesting. Okay, so let me give you a quick rundown on him, because his that story is not only relevant to the alien UFO issue, but to the occult issue. Okay. All right. All right. So Strieber claims that these visitors first got in contact with him when he was doing what? Well, when he was in his meditation oh, there you go. room gotcha. yeah, there you 
Right. So he was involved in certain mystical practices and he had a room in his house devoted to meditation and there he is meditating and there come these visitors. So that tells you something right there. Now, um, I think in the book I referred to him as, as a sort of Bertrand Russell character and because it's known philosophically that Bertrand Russell changed his mind throughout his life a lot as he tried to figure things out. Well, Whitley Strieber is the same. And one of the first things that he thought about these visitors is that they were demons. Mm, interesting. Okay. And so now what happens is then when people start talking about Whitley Strieber being demonized, then you have people like the professor Jeffrey Kripal basically talking about these uh, paranoid, dumb, dumb Christians who are saying that about Strieber. But hey, they got it from Strieber <laughs> to start Strieber with. Himself, right? right from the horses. Yeah. Mouth, right? Yeah. So now, uh, as I would listen to Strieber, because he does a regular talk show, every now and then he would mention um, military ties with his family and specifically that he knew people in the CIA. Uh, very yeah. generic statements, but in the back of my head, I kind of opened up a little file that read, you know, Willie Strieber, um, MK Ultra victim. Interesting. The MK Ultra victim is what I thought, but you know, that was very generic, so I just kind of stored it in the back of my head. And then one day he did a talk where he straight up states that he does believe he was a, a victim of the specific MK Ultra mind control experiment. Interesting. And for instance, when he was a kid, he also underwent, uh, have you heard of a Skinner box? It sounds familiar. They put you in a box or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. It's it's literally it's just a, a basic a form of sensory deprivation, mm -hmm. where you literally stick a child inside of a box. I mean, is that what Skinner did to his own kid? Didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah the Skinner box. That's that's what he, um, you know. Apparently, that was um, high psychiatry back in the day. Yeah. An opera, and they have a nice, nice, like, uh, euphemism for it the operant conditioning chamber. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds so wonderful. Let's try it, William. Let's try some operant conditioning. I'm going to do that right after we get done with this. Yeah. So, anyhow, um, Strieber then just came right out and is very open that he does believe that he underwent MKUltra mind control um, experimentation. Wasn't he, wasn't he in the UK at one point? I forgot. I could have swore that he was in. I know he mostly lived in New York, but he, I'm okay. sure he got around. Okay. So then I remember watching a video documentary about uh, how there was supposedly footage of an actual alien that was kept in a secret military base. And you could see the alien right there on the footage. And to me, it was this obvious puppet. Okay, I mean, to me, it was obviously just a puppet. Now, they say, well, we contacted Whitley Strieber to get his opinion on it, but he was so freaked out, he didn't want to appear on camera. But here's what he says. Um, if that's not an actual video of an alien or a visitor, then whoever made the puppet knows how they move. Whitley Strieber, best-selling author of Communion, claims to have had numerous personal contacts with alien beings. He has become the de facto spokesman for the growing number of people who claim to have been abducted by extraterrestrials. The nationally syndicated television program Strange Universe asked Strieber and several other abductees to view the alien interview tape. What Strieber saw left him profoundly shaken. Strieber would not agree to be interviewed on camera for this program, but on Strange Universe he had this to say.
how they move. How they move. Okay, so that tells me this. Okay, it's an obvious puppet. So what does that tell me? When Strieber was being made to undergo um, MK Ultra experimentation, they trotted out this puppet and they made him believe that it's a real life being. Fascinating. All right. So he that's really how it was. That's, yes, that's how it struck me. And now here's um, Strieber's ultimate conclusion is that yes, he underwent this mind control experimentation, but that he still does believe that the visitors were a real phenomena. And why is that? He says, well, because whenever I had experiences with the visitors, people who ran into me that day noted that I was agitated. Okay, uh, you know, all right, that to me is a, a stretch like that traverses the length of the universe because why not say, hey, I know I underwent MK Ultra experimentation and the reason people noted I was agitated on that day is because all these CIA nuts were experimenting on me. Not because some other dimensional uh, beings were visiting me, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a, uh, it's like an Occam's razor approach. You know, what's more likely that you were agitated because you were being experimented upon with your military background and CIA contacts or because some other dimensional entities were visiting you. So that to me, uh, Strieber is a very fascinating character to me. Yeah. I think I've heard somebody else may, uh, the guy's name is Jason Horsley, who is uh Research Strieber and said that he had something strange. The, the blog is Autic Culture, if you want to look that up. But he said there's something sketchy about Strieber and his associations in 1960s, the London kind of zeitgeist. I'm not going to get humped by a giant red gorilla in space, okay? No, thank you. <laughs>